Hi, my name is Richard Casavant. Today we're going to talk about rule number seven, let's get physical. It's one of 11 rules found in the Boston Rules Building Relationships Like a Dog. We've been talking about the, the rules that relate to service in a topic called From Wags to Welcome. The rules that apply to service from WAGS to welcome is rule number one, welcome, 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 which is one of the four important customer service needs. Welcome, important, comfortable, and understood. Number two, accept others as they are, which is all about the idea of inclusion and making your workplace a positive place so that differences can be celebrated, perspectives can be uh, shared, and talents can be gained in terms of having a positive work environment for those that are different than us. Rule number seven, let's get physical, deals with the nonverbal behavior communication. We'll look at some stats and we'll also talk about how dogs do that so well. And then rule number eight, live your passion, talks about strategic planning. And when we talk about customer service, I believe customer service is one of the highest callings that there are in terms of offering ourselves, our talents, our skills, and our time to making somebody else's life or experience good and better. So these four rules, one, number two, number seven, and number eight, all have to do with service. So let's look at number seven. Let's get physical. Let me read you the quote out of the Let's Get Physical, out of the book. Too often we underestimate the power of a touch, a smile, a kind word, a listening ear, an honest compliment, or the smallest act of caring, all of which have the potential to turn a life around. I think the best example of that is sometimes when you're with somebody and you say something, you have no idea what they were contemplating at that time. And what you, by saying what you did, may have averted something that we don't even want to even think about. So let's look at, let's get physical. Depending on what you read, there's a number of statistics that relate to nonverbal body behavior. Um, in rule number six, we'll talk about the actual art of communication in terms of our words by know your intent. But let's look at number six, uh, number seven rather. Let's get physical. Depending on what you read, 65% of what you say is said without a word. 28% of what you say is our tone of voice. That leaves 7% for the actual words. So if I look at you and I go, well, I'm really glad that you're watching this video and it should be a really nice video and of all things, you know, you'll take it and do something with. Based on my nonverbals of looking over and off the camera, 65% of that, you didn't believe a word that I said, even though the words, the 7%, were good. I hope you watch the video. I'm sure you're going to take something away from it. And who knows, something may even change as a result of it. The tone of my voice, rather than being like this, was very flat, very low, and very monotone. So when you're on the phone, imagine you are only getting to deal with 35% of the nonverbal body behavior or body communication, tone of voice, and your words on the phone. If you write an email, it's a whopping 7% impact. That's all. It's only words. There's no tone of voice in an email, nor is there any nonverbal in terms of your body positioning and people paying attention to that. So when it comes to communication, that's why video conferencing is such a big deal now. That's why programs like Skype, that's why Zoom, that's why these programs have tremendous value to companies now because they still give you all three of those. They give you the nonverbals from the body, they give you the words, actual words, and they give you the tone of voice. So when you put that all together, now you're talking about all three modems or mediums of communication. So if that's face to face, and I think sometimes people grab their technology today, and they're more quick to go ahead and send out a text or an email, which is solely the words, about 7%, and they forget the value of picking up the phone and improving that from 7 to 35, or they forget the idea of even doing a face-to-face. -face. So when it comes to nonverbal communication, it is important to have all three of those match so that you can make the impact that you're wanting to make. As a dog trainer, when all three of those, the tone of voice, the words that I use, and my body positioning, is aligned, then the training is absolutely perfect. The dog understands what I'm saying and what I'm doing and what I'm expecting, and it comes out as purely authentic and genuine from me. So when we start looking at nonverbal uh, communications, there's a number of the things that, uh, that we can look at. For example, eyes. 
Um, if I stare at you, really there's only two times people stare at anybody. One, when they're angry, and two, when they like them. So the next time somebody is staring at you, you have to ask yourself, are they mad at me or madly in love with me? There's also eyebrows, the eyebrow flash. When we look at somebody and we raise our eyebrows and we don't even know we're doing it, the eyebrow flash is a form of nonverbal acceptance. We like what it is that we see and so we invite people in to our eyes with the eyebrow flash, almost like opening a door. So when it comes to nonverbals, there's a lot that we do and sometimes we're not even aware of it. But nonverbal behavior goes far beyond just the touch. It goes far beyond the uh, the idea of shaking somebody's hands or crossing your legs. It has a lot to do with the issue of acknowledgement. Remember, rule number one, welcome, 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 is where our dog meets us at the door before anybody else does to acknowledge our presence. That's a good thing in customer service. Rule number two, accept others as they are. That's the whole idea of inclusiveness, inclusion, to where you're not judging people based on what they look or based on your past experiences, but you're taking them at face value like our dogs do, whether it's Brad Pitt or a homeless person on the sidewalk. The other part is the idea of communication, and this is what we're talking about today with the idea of let's get physical, two sides of communication, verbal and nonverbal. And so today we're looking at let's get physical because there's a whole authenticity and genuineness to communication in service that can tell somebody that if you're a checkout person at a grocery store and you say, have a good day, you probably don't mean have a good day. And I look forward to seeing you back in here again. And then of course, rule number eight, which is live your passion. And that's the whole idea of recognition. When people live their passion, you cannot help but imagine that word passion into three words, pass, I, on, and you cannot help but recognize them for being so tuned in, tapped in, turned on to who it is that they are, that there's very little difference between who they are and what they do. So those are the four rules based on the Boston Rule of Building Relationships Like a Dog that go into the topic, Wags to Welcome. That's all about customer service. So thanks for joining me. Grab the book, read it, and help me to create a kinder, more accepting world by building kinder, more accepting relationships. You have a great day. I'll talk to you again.